Hello guys, it's Slapkin speaking. Now, when doing this video, it feels to me as if I'm beating a dead horse because I wanted to do a video on Peter Goodgold, aka the president of the Waterworks for You site, who has been active in false flagging another user by the name of Answers in Books. Here, I'm going to react to a video that was originally on YouTube and called Bad Water and Bad Bottles and was taken down because the Waterworks For You YouTube channel was taken down. However, the video was re-uploaded on the Waterworks For You site, so if you want to see it, go there. And before I start replying, I also feel the need to make a juridical statement in case someone wants to threaten me with false flagging. As a French citizen, I am asked to follow the European and French norms. In terms of copyright, there are exceptions to getting permission to broadcast them, as mentioned in the 9th and 10th article of the Berne Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works. Now, specifically in my case, those exceptions are defined in Article 122.5 of the French Code of Intellectual Property. The exceptions that applies to my video is the, quote, analysis and short quotes justified by the critical, polemical, educational, scientific, or informative nature of the work to which they are incorporated." Unquote. <clears throat> of course, for this exception to work, I am to put the source on the copyrighted video I am quoting from, but thankfully, Peter Goodgold has already taken care of this minor detail for me. And uh, with that said, let us address the points. So, again, we're 90% water when we're born, we're 70% now and 50% when we pass on. So if you can hydrate yourself with good, healthy water, we can slow down the aging process. Slow down the aging process, eh? What need is there for expensive creams and genetic research on chromosomic telomeres when the answer to all of these problems was to simply actually drink water? Now, I don't know about you, but this in some ways sounds like a famous legend in the Middle Ages. That is the fountain of youth, a magical spring that would restore youth to the elderly, and was such a fantastic story that it urged Europeans to look for it in Asia and America, and was thought, by the way, to be somewhere in Florida. Now surely Peter Goodgold isn't actually selling a modernized and commercial version of this medieval myth to other people, right? Well, think again. Let me just talk about these bottles for one minute here, just bear with me. We have got to make a statement. The statement is, do we pay to breathe air? No, it's a natural resource, isn't it? Why are we paying to drink water? Now, that's a very fair and justified question. Why would anyone buy bottled water? Well, firstly, because you can't just drink all the water you can see. Only a very small portion of the planet's water can be ingested. Now, that's the obvious point, right? Uh, secondly, not all countries have access to drinkable water, or even water alone. Hence, bottled water gives these countries good stockable quantities of water to drink. This is also the same reason that motivates the distribution of bottled water to regions that lie in ruins after natural or man-made disaster. As it's easy to give and safer than to encourage people to drink the local water that may be contaminated, if it is even available, that is. But let's focus on our rich capitalistic countries. Why would we pay for these when we can drink the water from the faucet? Well, firstly, you aren't necessarily always near a drinkable water faucet, so bottled water is not only more accessible, but also practical, as you can carry it anywhere. Also, a point that is often ignored when addressing this topic, bottled water comes in a lot of known variety and with very different ingredients, something you don't necessarily have when you drink tap water. Another point that I found relevant, this idea of distributing water in bottles for people to pay for is a French idea. It explains very well why we French, along with our Swiss friends, are in the first place in terms of worldwide exportations of mineral water. Buying bad water in a toxic petroleum bottle leaches oil into the water. Now this needs some clarification. It is true that plastic bottles can leach certain chemicals. Bisphenol A is one of those chemicals, although Harvard studies show that the consumed amount from those increased doses are still harmless to the body. Not all plastic bottles that are recyclable leach this chemical and the majority are free from bisphenol A, especially in Canada and in Peter Goodgold's country where bisphenol A leaching plastics are forbidden. 
Recent studies have also shown that plastic bottles may leach estrogenic compounds, which may affect gestation of babies, sexual orientation, and so on, because I have to remind you that estrogens are female hormones. Now, research in bioplastics ought to greatly reduce the number of these leachings to a lower level. But nowhere, not even in green sites, has it ever been suggested that plastic bottles actually leach oil. In fact, there's no petroleum left in the bottles to leak, for it has been used to make the plastic. So we have got to make a statement. We have got to say no to RO. That's what makes these bottles. Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis takes everything out of the water. And because it's so pure, and there's nothing in nature that pure, it leaches carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and it makes the water acidic. Okay, stop. Pure water has a pH of 7, which is neutral. This flies off of Mr. Goodgold's statement that pure water is acidic. And uh, some bottled waters do achieve this very closely and naturally. For instance, Volvic, which is a natural volcanic mineral spring water from France, has a pH of 7.07, .07, so rather neutral. Secondly, there are classifications given for water undergoing reverse osmosis. Any water going through this process is forced to be labeled as purified water on the bottle. So as you can see, an overgeneralization is made. Not all water in plastic bottles is purified. Indeed, there are other classifications such as distilled water, artesian water, mineral water, spring water, still and sparkling water, and so on. And it makes the water acidic. How acidic? Here's the number, number four on the pH scale. A water with a pH of 4. Sounds very harmful to the body. Well, the question of whether something is good to digest or not depends on more criteria than the pH, because, for instance, orange juice is more acidic than that, with an average pH of 3.5. But generally speaking, water that tends towards acidity doesn't pose much immediate problems, as the stomach regulates the acidity of its produced fluids, thus ensuring that it remains at a constant pH of 1.2 although a few bacteria can survive that. However, it should be noted that you shouldn't rely too much on water with a low pH. Uh, health experts recommend people exempt of special medical conditions to drink water with a pH in the ranges of 6 to 8.5 pH. But to be honest, you'd be better off with water in the lines of your blood's pH, which is rather neutral, with a pH of 7.3 to 7.6. Also, you'd want to ingest some low quantities of minerals in your water to help your immune system, especially magnesium and calcium. Number seven is neutral. And by law, all of our tap water has to be seven or above. There is no law governing these bottles. <coughs> Actually, the World Health Organization publishes guidelines for bottled water that are often reused in national juridical norms. For instance, the Safe Drinking Water Act in the US for different organizations to control. Also, if you have a problem with the contents of the water distributed by a certain company, you can take it to the International Bottled Water Association that provides free testing to consumers that are skeptical of whether the water in a certain bottle is safe to drink. It is also the same organization that sees annually that the plants in the bottled water industry are safe and do not compromise the quality of the water. The EPA checks our tap water three times a year. They never check these bottles. Indeed, the EPA never check these bottles. And they don't have to. The EPA takes care of tap water. Bottled water is considered a food product and thus falls under the responsibility of the Foods and Drugs Association. There could be anything in these bottles. Well, we do know what ingredients are contained in the water by looking on the wrap around the bottle. There are laws that oblige the companies of informing their customers of the contents of a product and what behaviors they should follow or not follow regarding the product. Omitting elements of information can result in extremely huge fines for any professional or company if you take it in court. This is one of the reasons why you find silly things on some products, like for instance on peanut snacks the label warning contains peanuts, or on microwave machines that you 
shouldn't put your pets inside to dry them. Or, my personal favorite, on chainsaws that you shouldn't try to stop the chain with your hands or your genitals. Yes, this sounds painful, because these troublesome events happened for real, and the company got blamed and severely fined because it did not discourage in the notice to follow such behaviors and conducts. Companies then write these obviously silly warnings so they can't take the responsibility if it should ever happen again from ignorance or sheer suicidal stupidity. We've been hoodwinked to think that this is better. It's not. Your tap water is 7. In Florida, it's 8. Here in New York City, it's 7.5 with minerals in it. There is no minerals in this. You know, it's not for nothing that mineral water is actually called mineral water. Maybe it's, I don't know, because they have minerals in them? So when you're drinking this water, where are you getting your minerals from? You're not. So your body needs these minerals, leaches it from your teeth and your bones. Wait, what? So your body needs these minerals, leaches it from your teeth and your bones. Oh dear. So it is implied that the minerals we get from water is made from the reaction of the water to teeth and somehow the bones that is in our bodies. You know what? Sounds more like acid water to me! Which is rather comical considering this man's previous explanation of how water with a low pH is bad. So, we created the Rejuvenator Water Ionizer. Ah uh, yes, that miraculous fountain of youth device that solves all problems and prevents all diseases. <laughs> what does it consist of, you might ask? Well, let's allow answers in books to reply to this question in full detail, and let's allow him even to conclude. There's only one disease. It's called acidosis. Get rid of the acid, get rid of the disease. Acid in our body creates molds, funguses, and yeasts. These are the precursors to all disease. What we see here is not only sickeningly ignorant, but it is also dangerous and exploitative. Welcome to the world of ionized water. So I'll try anything at this point. It sounds too good to be true. How can water have different functions? So I started drinking it. I started drinking at level 1, 8.5 for one week. Next week, 9. Third week, 9.5. And by the fourth week, I could drink 10 pH. You can't drink 10 the first week because you detoxify so much you think you're sick. The premise of these devices is simple. As I described in my recent video to Neff, water can break apart into a hydrogen minus its electron and an oxygen and hydrogen that retained an extra electron, called hydroxide. The H plus is acidic and the OH minus basic. In water, the rate in which the two separate is so small in comparison to the rate of the reverse reaction that about two water molecules out of every billion are disassociated. This is why pure water is such a bad conductor of electricity, as the ions are actually what carries the charge. These devices report to break the water molecule apart using an electric potential, a process called electrolysis. They claim to separate the water into two ions, H plus and OH minus, then collect and combine these to give a required pH. This is a flat-out lie. It cannot happen. Electrolysis can and does happen. However, pure water is such a poor conductor that the process is inefficient and slow. Not only that, but acids and alkalis require a counter-ion. You cannot have an excess of H plus to make an acid, or OH minus to make an alkali, without another ion of the opposite charge being available in an equal number. For example, hydrochloric acid, HCl, when added to water disassociates into a H plus and a Cl minus. If you were to follow the method supposedly used in these devices, there would be no counter ion, so it wouldn't work. It is even more ridiculous than that. Electrolysis of pure water gives two products gaseous oxygen and hydrogen. The suggestion that it is possible to collect what at best will be short-lived intermediates in this process in the manner proposed by these swindlers is no more than a rotten filthy attempt at fraud. 
The only conceivable way that you have a chance of making acidic or alkali solutions by the method used in the machines these scam artists push is by the addition of impurities, such as salts, to the water. Most, if not all, domestic water supplies have such impurities. However, the reason that these work is due to the fact that the dissolved salts form new compounds once broken down in the electrolysis device. Let us use common table salt, sodium chloride, as an example. The chloride ion is drawn to the positive electrode and forms chlorine gas. This is soluble and therefore has an opportunity to react with the OH- ions formed at the negative electrode. This produces hypochlorous acid. This is a weak acid commonly used in swimming pools whereas the sodium ions are able to react with yet more OH- ions to produce sodium hydroxide, a strong alkali commonly found in drain unblocking products. These people are effectively selling to their customers a machine to make dilute Drano for them to drink. Now I'm not a doctor of medicine, but this strikes me as ludicrous. However, things get even worse. Almost as if getting people to drink Drano whilst paying well over the odds for the privilege was not enough. As previously mentioned, the two collected streams of water can be combined to produce a desired pH. Needless to say, this is not so simple. Combine these two products and you will produce sodium hypochlorite, aka laundry bleach. That's right. Buy one of these machines and you will not only get a cleansing drink of drain cleaner, but also bleach. If all of this is not enough to turn your stomach, then hold this thought. All of this expense and self-poisoning takes place for no good reason. The acid-base chemistry that takes place in our bodies every day is not only commonplace and numerous in its incidence, but it is also regulated by our bodies naturally. And no. Acid in our body creates molds, funguses and yeasts. These are the precursors to all disease. Spontaneous generation of pathogens due to acidic conditions is so ridiculous that I am personally glad that Louis Pasteur is not around to hear it. All of this is based on a fundamental misrepresentation of a scientific principle and a denial of one of the greatest scientific theories available to us. Maybe this explains these machines more than anything. Consider, if your toilet is blocked and over time threatens to pollute all around it, it would be only wise to pour some drain cleaner down it. Maybe someone decided if this course of action worked for one instance of a fecally congested orifice, it may work on the other. Drink up. And that's why I'm here. I want to help people get off of medication and drink good water. <laughs> right!